everyone so today I am here to do my February wrap-up so February is actually a really good reading month surprisingly because when I made my currently reading video in the middle of the month I think I was literally like two weeks into the month and I had read three books and now I'm coming at you with 16 so I definitely read some books <laughs> Basically, this is 100% because I downloaded Stardew Valley on my Switch and I just started binging audiobooks of like books that I had on my TBR and playing Stardew Valley for like hours and hours and hours and it's been a awesome time. It's actually been so relaxing and so nice. I know that some people are like video games aren't like relaxing. Stardew Valley is one of the most relaxing games ever. It's basically Harvest Moon for um, OG Nintendo people, but yeah, I, I've i been having a great time, so I got through so many books because of it. So I'm ready to talk about the 16 books I read in February. So I'm going to just be going in chronological order of what I read. Let's just get on into it. The first book that I finished this month was actually one I've talked about in a couple of videos now because I loved it, and that is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This is a book that I read for my Victorian literature class, and... Again, I kind of loved this. I was shocked. I have been getting recommended this book for so long. It was a lot of people in like high school's favorite book. And I was always just like, honest, I'm not gonna lie. I honestly thought it was kind of like Pride and Prejudice my entire life. Like I just have never really connected with those olden, like written a long time ago, like coming of age for girls stories because there was very misogynistic and patriarchal and this one still is a little bit patriarchal for sure but they're always just like about like really pretty girls and their whole like coming of age thing is just finding a husband and I don't, I don't know, I don't relate to that kind of stuff so I was always very hesitant about Jane Eyre and I read it and I absolutely loved it. Um, Jane Eyre is definitely a coming of age story but Jane is very different I feel like from our kind of classic olden female protagonist. She's actually quite ugly and homely and her love interest is also kind of ugly which I love that. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I love that they're kind of ugly. <laughs> And we also looked at this a lot from a gothic point of view and we focus a lot on the architecture and kind of aura of Thornfield as well as Ferndine and like kind of uh, Jane's like growth as a human between as she moves between physical spaces. My professor is really really interested in architecture in gothic literature because gothic literature is actually one of the only genres of literature that is like um, completely based off of setting rather than a time period or like any content of the book it is based on architecture and yeah I love Jane Eyre I gave it a 4.5 4.75 maybe a full five I don't know I keep sitting on it and like thinking about it I'm like I feel like it's a five but it did have a couple of slower parts and misogynistic parts so I'm kind of like but I did end up loving this so I was really really happy that I loved this so much oh no I rearranged stuff I don't know where to put my books does that work? <laughs> and unfortunately the next book was honestly a huge letdown and that is Girls of Storm and Shadow by Natasha Nagan. I bought this back when it like first came out and I only just got around to reading this. This is the sequel to Girls of Paper and Fire which I really really loved for the lesbian relationship and like exploring really difficult topics and everything and I was interested in picking up the second one just because I loved the first one so much. I'm not gonna lie, sequels almost always ruin things for me. I'm just not that big into fantasy anymore and with that I'm not very big into series anymore. I just find series to be very unnecessary. Like almost every story can be told in one book in my opinion. Like just make it a long book and this book was a hundred percent just like nothing like nothing happens in this book until the very very end and I was so bored the entire time and I didn't care what was happening and again it's like it's not even a long fantasy book and I'm just like this could have been like one chapter in like a single book like this could have been like the first book this could have been like a chapter or two and then the ending like and I don't think I'm gonna be reading the third book I just don't care enough and I'm just, I'm, I'm just very over fantasy and I don't know what to do about it. Like, I keep trying to read more and more fantasy and I just don't care anymore. 
All right, and the next thing I read was one that a book that's been on my TBR for quite a while, and that is Final Girls by Riley Sager. This is a pretty popular uh, thriller novel, basically following these girls who are considered final girls, which are like the one person that's left at the end of a horror movie. And the premise was really, really interesting, and it definitely was a page turner. Like, when I was actually reading it, I was just like, woo, let's go. But also, like, while I was reading this, I kind of kept forgetting that I was reading it. Like, I didn't really care that much. And then the ending was just okay. Like, this, this story is fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's also nothing special. So I give it a three out of five star. I'm interested in Riley Sager because everyone hypes him up so much, but... This was this one was just okay. Maybe I'll be checking out his like I don't know what they're called, but there's one that like takes place in an apartment that everyone seems to really like, so maybe I'll check that one out next. All right, up next I reread Lost Boy by Christina Henry and I reread this for my Peter Pan project. I'm doing an independent study all about Peter Pan and adaptation and I reread this one. This is a book I read a couple years ago and I absolutely loved it and I loved it even more upon this reread. Basically in this book we follow Hook as our main narrator and him being the first ever lost boy. So he was Peter's first friend and they were lost boys together for like a very very long time. He's like hundreds of seasons have passed and he hasn't aged obviously because you don't age in Neverland and basically it kind of has like an evil twist on Peter Pan but of course there's also this question of the unreliable narrator because we're learning this story from Hook's point of view. Um, but I absolutely love this. I think the only problem with it is I you could definitely argue it there there's a little bit of queer baiting um, just because it talks a lot about Hook being in love with Peter and nothing really comes from that so Take that as you will, but I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars, and I love this retelling so much. Also, rereading it after, like, having read so much into Peter Pan and doing so much research on Barry and everything, Christina Henry definitely did her research before writing this, and I appreciated it so, so much, and I loved this retelling. Really good. I also read Peter Pan in Kensington Garden and Peter and Wendy and this one was so confusing because I thought that this was a prequel and a sequel to Peter Pan that's why I like had it assigned and um Peter Pan in Kensington Garden is literally just chapter 12 and 13 from Little White Bird which I read last month and Peter and Wendy is just another name for Peter Pan so I very briefly skimmed over this um just to make sure I there was no extra information there wasn't so this was kind of a useless read, but you know, I read it. <laughs> and then for my Victorian lit class, we read a bunch of stories from Poe. We read Fall of the House of Usher, The Mask of the Red Death, uh, Pit and Pendulum, and The Cask of Amontillado, which I would actually read two of those before. I read a lot of Poe <laughs> in my life. I've had this copy since I was in like middle school. And yeah, we obviously, again, in this Victorian Lit class, we're focusing a lot on architecture. And in this, we focused on architecture and also the performance of torture. And it was pretty interesting. It was definitely a new look at Poe. I love Poe a lot, so this is a 5 out of 5 star for me. Even though not every single story is a 5 star, I just give Poe 5 stars every time. So, yeah. If you haven't read Poe yet, definitely give him a shot. He's pretty dang good. <laughs> Next up, I read a pretty disappointing one just because this was kind of a five-star prediction in my eyes because I've been so into like terror and suspense horror kind of thing recently and this I'd always heard was super suspenseful and terrifying and everything and that is 172 Hours on the Moon by Johan Harstad. This was a booktube fave quite a few years ago and I'd never read it because I didn't like horror at the time and so I finally picked this up and again I was predicting a five-star and I gave it too. So it's a big disappointment. Basically my biggest problem with this is that like we don't get to the moon until like over 200 pages into this you know like less than 400 page book. So it takes way too long for us to actually get to the moon and also in that time nothing really happens like we meet each character so basically this is about three kids who get to go to the moon like teenagers who get to go to the moon and like it's a raffle and stuff so we kind of briefly learn about each character as they like get picked but then we don't even get like them 
becoming friends or anything. Like, it's just suddenly, like, six months later, going to the moon, and it's like, why didn't we get any sort of character development or relationship development? And then when we finally get to the moon, it's just okay. Like, I have a personal thing with this that I can't believe this guy didn't get called out for plagiarism. Now, this is kind of a spoiler. So if you've seen this movie, it's going to be a spoiler. So if you really don't want to know anything about this book, like skip ahead until I'm not holding this anymore. But I'm shocked that this guy didn't get called for plagiarism of The Thing. The Thing is like a very, very famous mo movie and he rips it off. Like it's almost identical to The Thing. Not like exactly, but it is so similar. Like, it's kind of ridiculous. Like, the whole, the, basically the whole ending is almost identical to the ending of the thing. And I was just like, I was listening to it because I listened to this on audio. And I was just sitting there like, what? Re really? Like, he watched the thing and then put it on the moon. And that's literally the book. Like, now I'm actually going to say what the ending of this book is. So if you really don't want to know, skip ahead again. But literally the ending of this is that there's like this thing on the moon that m becomes a doppelganger to the people and kills the original person so they can become their doppelganger and then the thing gets to earth by like making itself look like the last girl and gets to earth and it's the whole question of like oh it's gonna kill everyone and everyone is this thing and I'm literally that is the ending of the thing the movie is you have the last guy who's sitting there with another guy who is very obviously the thing and it's the whole like he, the thing is gonna kill him and then go into the world and become like kind of take over the world and that's literally the ending of this book I was like you you didn't even try to be different like literally there's a thing and then it becomes a doppelganger and then it tries to take over the world. Like there is li like, it's the exact same ending just set on the moon rather than Antarctica uh, or Antarctica, which is like almost similar. Like Antarctica is basically the moon on earth. <laughs> like I was just kind of like, this book didn't do it well and it ripped off a wicked famous movie. I was just like, are you kidding me? So needless to say, I was very, very disappointed in this and I gave it a two star. So there's that. So the next book I read was a romance book that has been pretty hyped on booktube and that is One Day in December by Josie Silver and I actually really really enjoyed this. This is a romance story that basically takes place over 10 years and it's pretty dang tragic but I found that this really explored a lot of like human experiences that I feel like aren't really explored a lot in romance. In this book we deal with like friendship breakups, we deal with real breakups, we deal with divorce, we deal with pregnancy and like this question of wanting to be pregnant or not and having kids or not. Also like moving away and moving away from family and friends and isolation and everything like that. But the main premise is that basically this girl sees this man when she's getting on this bus and he's sitting at the bus stop and basically becomes a little obsessed with trying to find this guy because she is very convinced that they had this connection and she looks for him for almost an entire year and then she finds him when her best friend introduces him as her boyfriend who she's absolutely obsessed with and believes that they're going to get married and everything like that and again it takes over it spans over 10 years it's tragic but also beautiful and I thought that the pacing of this book was really really excellent I thought Josie Silver took the perfect amount of time kind of on each topic and it was great I really really loved this if you're a romance reader definitely recommend next up I listened to a thrill just a little thriller that I feel like is really really popular and that is The Couple Next Door by Sherry LaPena um this is I don't think you can consider this a thriller. I'm not gonna lie. This is just a mystery, like a detective mystery book. And also, it just, like, my biggest problem with this is you find out what's going on, like, way too early. Like, the plot twist happens so early on. But basically, this is about a couple who leaves their baby at home alone while they go over to the neighbor's house to, like, party and drink and stuff and 
first off, I'm like, why did you leave your baby home alone? I don't care that you're running over every hour to check on it. Like, you're a bad person. Sorry. And also, the ending was just dumb. Like, the twist ending was stupid. And also, like, again, you know what's going on, like, pretty early on. And then it's just, like, going through what happened. And I just, I thought it was kind of boring. Not very thrilling. I didn't enjoy it that much, so I give it a 2 out of 5 star. I don't- I like- some people say that that's like their favorite thriller ever, and I genuinely don't understand why. Because, like, n like it's not thrilling or exciting in any way. <laughs> Next up, I read a book that I'm doing a little bit of a project on. You guys will be getting a full video about this book, um, and that is No Longer Human by Asamu, Asamu Desai. This is a Japanese kind of modern classic um, about a man who doesn't feel human. Basically, this is a lot about his like thought process and talking about how he doesn't feel like a human being and how he has always been baffled by human beings. Um, basically, Junji Ito adapted this into one of his horror mangas and I am actually kind of doing a focus and adaptation in my master's degree, so I was really interested in this because I love Japanese literature, I love Junji Ito and manga, so I thought it would be a really interesting idea to do. This adaptation is something that Dylan told me about, so credits to Dylan, but yeah, so I'm still working on the manga because it's a big manga, and this I enjoyed. I really, really liked the beginning of the book, but unfortunately it kind of went downhill for me. I just, I... I kind of compared this to Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata where in that book you kind of follow this woman who doesn't really fit in with society and kind of talks about how she's comfortable in her life and all of that and in this we follow a man who doesn't really feel like he fits into society and doesn't feel like a human being literally and I love that thought process and I thought it was so so interesting but then like the second half of the book is basically just about drugs and alcohol and like sex and I was just kind of like I don't I don't care and I don't feel very comfortable reading about that kind of stuff like I really don't like reading about drug use in books so it was just okay um I really loved the beginning though so I did give it a four to five stars and I do like all of the ideas and stuff that he explores in this book and the ending is pretty good but there's just that middle part of like just drugs and alcohol and just having tons of sex and I was just like I'm not into it um but it is a very very tiny book so it was a small part of it but still wasn't a huge fan, but I gave the book as a whole a four star because it was really, really interesting. And you guys will be getting a whole video about this and the Junji Ito adaptation in March. Next up, I reread my favorite Peter Pan adaptation, and that is Peter Darling by Austin Chant. This is again for my Peter Pan project. Um, Peter Darling is a queer adaptation of Peter Pan by a queer person. Austin Chant is a queer trans man, and basically this book follows as if Peter was also a queer trans man. Basically this book follows as if Peter and Wendy are the same person. So when he is in reality, in the real world, he is Wendy and he is trans and feels as though he was born in the wrong body and wants to be a boy and is a boy but trapped in Wendy's body kind of thing. And then when they go to Neverland, he has the body he wants and is Peter Pan. And this book basically takes place after Wendy goes to Neverland and is Peter for a while, she, he goes back to the real world and grows up and it's 10 years later and then he wants to go back to Neverland because he feels like out of place still. And basically it goes back to Neverland 10 years later and everyone has aged up with Peter and it has a romance between Peter and Hook and it's really really interesting. It's one of the most interesting character studies I've seen in a while and also I do love the queer aspects to this book and I loved it and I feel very bad that if you think that sounds like an interesting book this book is no longer in print so it's very very difficult to get. So yeah I love that book five out of five stars. Next up I read a book that absolutely surprised me because I have seen such mixed reviews about this and also no one ever actually says what it's fucking about which is my most annoying pet peeve about booktube is everyone's like oh this book and talks about it and never says what it's actually about. I thought this was a fantasy book. So there you go. 
but that is The Immortalist by Chloe Benjamin. This book is about, it's a historical fiction that takes starts in the 1960s when a group of four siblings go to a psychic or fortune teller to get their fortunes read and they are each told the exact day that they are going to die and it follows each um, sibling during their life and seeing whether or not their kind of fate comes true. It also really explores the idea of like is your fate set in stone or are you able to change it and kind of this question of like if you're told exactly when you're going to die are you going to alter your life so that it actually happens or is it actually fate? Um, so you know if you were told you're gonna die December 1st 2027 would you change your life to force that to happen like would you start living more recklessly or would you like would that day come and you're so anxious and stressed out that it happens because of that um and I really really loved this again we follow all four siblings during their lives and you get very very different perspectives and everything this family is also Jewish so we have a lot of good representation there's also a gay man who basically also there's a whole conversation about AIDS and the AIDS epidemic when it first started and it's awesome. I loved this so much. It was a, so addicting in the most like tragic way possible. I just couldn't stop reading because it's kind of like you kind of know what's gonna happen right from the get-go and it's this question of is it gonna actually happen and you just keep reading it. Like I read 90% of this book in one sitting and then literally couldn't keep my eyes open any longer so I put it down and finished it the next day but I loved this book. I gave it like a 4.75 out of 5 stars I think like technically but I would round it up to a five star. I love this. I really highly recommend it. There are a lot of trigger warnings though so if you don't feel like you can handle it don't but it was amazing and I loved it. I know a lot of people hate that book though like I know a couple specific booktubers who hate that book. I loved it though so. <laughs> and then I read the only not like book that wasn't physically on my TBR but I'd been on the waiting list for a really long time on my Libby app and that is The Chestnut Man by Sovereign Svestrup. I'm sorry I didn't say that right at all. This is like kind of one of the big thrillers of the year and I feel like I'm just constantly disappointed every time I pick this up. Like I picked up The Chain last year, all of that, and this was kind of the new big thriller. And this again, kind of like The Couple Next Door, this isn't a thriller. I don't know why people just put mysteries and like detective books in the same category as a thriller. A thriller should be like a psychological, dark, twisted, constant twists and turns thriller like that's the name of it but like people always just say mysteries are thrillers and I'm like no it's not this is a detective mystery I hate detective mysteries I find mysteries to be so boring and that was the same with this one it was literally just like watching two detectives try to figure out a mystery and I'm not gonna lie I feel like you know a book isn't that great when there's like the reveal at the end and I couldn't remember who that person was in the story so it had absolutely no impact on me whatsoever so yeah this was just okay it was entertaining I could I will forget every single detail of this book by the time like March rolls around and yeah I I can't I if you like detective mysteries you might like this but if you want a thriller this is not a thriller um so I gave it like a two and a half three stars basically all the thrillers I read this month were very very average and very much not thrillers and next up I reread another book for my Peter Pan class and that was Tiger Lily by Jodi Lynn Anderson I'm not gonna lie I kind of ended up skimming this one because Basically at the very beginning of this book I realized I have such an interesting kind of research project to do with this and Tiger Lily and her adaptations in literature and film and I realized that I want to do a little bit of exploring into theory before reading this one so I kind of skimmed it just to be able to um, talk about it with my professor for my study because this was assigned for one week and I just kind of skimmed it really quick because I want to go back and really be able to analyze it when I have some theory behind my idea. So I do love this one though and it was just as good as when I read it for the first time even skimming through it and I give it a 4 out of 5 star. This is basically um, about Tiger Lily and Peter rather than Peter and Wendy um, as told from Tinkerbell's point of view and kind of a little bit of a romance between them which I find weird but that's fine. It's great. I really like it. 4 out of 5 stars.
And then I read a book that I was really, really excited about. It was a little bit of a letdown, but I still really recommend it. I don't want my like star rating to affect people picking this book up. And that is Full Disclosure by Cameron Garrett. And this book follows a teen who is HIV positive, which is wonderful. We need more representation like that, especially in YA. But this book really wasn't well written and it definitely suffered because of it. So I'm, I'm like not that big of a person who's like, oh, everything has to be super beautifully written. But this book was bad enough leave written to affect it. This book I described in a vlog that it felt like a textbook story. I don't know if other people have these but like specifically in my Korean textbook basically each chapter you read like a story that uses new vocabulary and new scenarios and stuff for you to be able to like read and conceptualize these ideas in like literature kind of format and each chapter the textbook would follow the same characters but again use like new vocabulary that you're supposed to be learning and like new scenarios and stuff and that's what this kind of felt like. Like, this kind of felt like a textbook story for HIV positivity um, and I just I don't know maybe I'm like not hip with the kids but this was so unrealistic for high school like I don't know about anyone else but like people were not this responsible and sex positive and open about sex like in high school sex is still so taboo and these kids were talking about it so openly and like so adult-y like I get it T kids in high school have sex like yes for sure but like are they this good about it like I don't know they just seemed a little bit too old in my personal opinion and it was a little unrealistic also it definitely did sometimes feel like a textbook's like here's a new topic and here's all of your e details and information about it and I appreciate it because it is a very educational book, but also I wish it had just been able to do it a little bit more seamlessly. Uh, but yeah, this does follow an HIV positive um, teenager in high school who has a crush on a boy and kind of discusses how that works and everything and also gets rid of a lot of different um, stereotypes and misinformation about being HIV positive. And it's definitely educational, but I would recommend it for a much younger audience. Like I think this book would be great if you're not in high school yet but I don't think when you're in high school or past high school this is going to be beneficial like it's gonna be beneficial because of all the educational aspects but you're gonna just be kind of cringing at the writing and the representation of high schoolers basically <laughs> but I gave it a three and a half out of five stars by the way and the last book I read because again I don't lie to you guys I skimmed this book and that is The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux in spring semester, you pick your battles. I'm just so <laughs> done with school right now. I just want summer. And I know I'm not going to use the Phantom of the Opera in anything I do. So I skimmed it and asked my friend Haley to tell me very good details about this book. And then I took really good notes in class. And that's about it. It seems like it would be a cool book. I have no interest in it, though. It, you didn't know this is about a dude who haunts an opera and... Then there's a girl who he's in love with. That's all I got out of it. <laughs> um, I really do like that. Um, apparently in the French book, he really is just called Opera Ghost. So he's called the OG. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm interested in maybe watching a movie about this. Like the movie adaptation of this. And that's about it. <laughs> that's all I got. Phantom of the Opera. But anyways, those are all of the books that I read for pleasure and for academics this some this semester, this month. Um, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video and definitely tell me down in the comments below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them. Anyways, I love you all and I'll see y'all soon. Bye!